Hi, I'm Tony Bowen. Welcome to my Corn Country Rails. Well, if you've been following my videos on my signal installations, this is just another extension of that. However, I'm done with signaling my lower deck, and so now I'm ready to start moving on the upper deck to start installing uh, signals. So, if you're curious of how I do it, this is the video for you. So sit back and enjoy. I'm going to take you step by step on the signal installation. When I started my signal installation, I started in May of 2020, and I have five different locations on the lower deck where I have signals. This is the last location right here with these two signal heads in east and westbound, but it's the wiring underneath that I needed to basically carry on the signal to the upper deck. Now, as trains come out of the layout room into my staging yard, I am going to put some signals in here. Um, that way, when I have a yard master working the staging yard down here, that person can tell with some signals if something is coming to them. So right now, the staging area, both the east and west end, are dark territory, along with all the way up the helix. I know it might be a little hard to see, but that blue wire is essentially my signal wire. So it goes from that last lower signal all the way underneath my lower staging yard, and then I took it up and I'm running it under the bench work for the upper deck. So that blue set of wires back there, those are my signal wires. Obviously the red and the black in the foreground are my bus wires and the speaker wire is just that for a speaker system down here. So the blue wire continues to where my first upper signal will go. And my blue wire stops right here at the TS2 circuit board made by Azatrax. So the brown and white wire at the very top is just the power going in. And the blue and white is essentially running that signal from the aspect that the lower signal will be all the way to what the signal aspect will be on this upper one. So we'll be able to detect a train. So that's a pretty long block. So once I do get additional signals cut in the staging yard, it will not seem to be such a long block. But for right now, I'm focused on getting the layout room signaled, then I can kind of cut in where I want the other signals to go. So with already having the circuit board in place, with the power hooked up and essentially just the two wires, the um, blue and white running into the lower um, port, it is essentially ready to start hooking up the new signals that will go in on the upper deck. So my plan all along has been putting in a set of signals every month. So obviously October is the month we're in and I'm putting in the signals here. I was using these push pins because they were very visible and easy to move around during operating sessions as kind of just where would I put signals in and I could easily move them around as needed. And so right now you can see there's no holes in the road bed yet for the infrared sensors, um, no holes for the um, actual signals yet either. And so this is roughly the location that I'm going to go to. I'm ready to start. Some things that are very handy that I will need. Obviously, I already have the TS2 mounted underneath, but I will need, obviously, my infrared sensors. So both a sender and receiver that will go on either side that I have that. I use my little tin plate that essentially I put in between the track, locating where my signal is going to go. And then on either side, I kind of take from where the signal is going to be and go out a scale 40 and scale feet to where one set of sensors will be, go back to the center where the signal is going to be, and then move out another 40 feet and scale feet, I should say scale feet, where my other set of sensors are going to be. That's where the two infrared um, sensors will be on either side of the signal. And then obviously my tin plate has holes there because I want to keep it uniform the distance that the signals are away from the track at every uh, location I put signals in. The other tool that I'll need for this 
is obviously my cordless drill with a 3 16 drill bit. And something very important is obviously since I have some scenery already done below, is that I want to mask this off, make sure that any of my um, debris is falling away from the layout and that. So I'm going to tape up kind of a drop cloth underneath so everything kind of comes out to the aisle way of the layout and then easily I can just sweep that up with the dry vac. So I hope you will enjoy this next portion because it's kind of boring to watch it all in actual time. So it's going to be in time lapse as I work through it. So I'd love to say I can work this fast on the layout all the time, but it won't be. So obviously you'll enjoy the time lapse of how quickly things get done. So enjoy. So at this point, the holes for the infrared sensors have been drilled through the layout where they will go. They have to be at a slight angle because they kind of uh, reflect off the bottom of the car. So each of them kind of goes down at an angle. And then obviously I quickly swept up the layout and then kind of my drop cloth here to catch all my stuff and just go on the layout floor if, if need be. So the next thing is getting the wires all straightened out before they get fed through the holes and hooked up to the TS2. So the infrared sensors come nicely wound. Um, you wanna make sure the wires are laying as flat as they can. It makes it a lot easier for kind of weaving and bending underneath for gaining access to the TS2 when you wanna hook it up. The other thing is they have a lot of good lead to them so you certainly can cut them and shorten them i have not yet instead i have kind of just kind of coiled them a little bit and tucked them up underneath the layout um, just for thinking if if i would ever move and want to take the signals and stuff like that they're with me my hope is that i'm not ever going to move but you know you never know so anyway it's uncoiling them and then just straightening out the wires so that they're ready to install into the holes that I just drilled.
So the westbound sender and receiver are in. And what I like to do is I like to leave them just so they're kind of free floating right now so I can kind of push up from the bottom of the layout and move them up or down or that. But once I have them where I want them, I'll come back with just a little Elmer's glue right around the outside edge and let it just kind of go down the hole. That seems to be enough to kind of set them in place. And then you can always come back with just a sprinkle of ballast and just a little 50-50 um, water glue mix. And I just apply it with just a drop with like a pipette and let it set overnight and then they're pretty well solid. Underneath the layout then, obviously we have their wire leads coming from the sender and the receiver. So our next thing is gonna be is to take that and connect it to where it needs to go in the TS2. All right, so I'm going to connect the west sensor right now and the TS2 um, directions that come from Azatrax are very clear on where you should hook them up. And so in this case, I'm gonna just start with my first one, which is the yellow wire. And I'm gonna run it up over by lighting and then down. And then later on, I will band the wires together. And for the yellow, it goes into the port that is marked X. So I find the little X, push in with the screwdriver, put it in that port, give it a little tug. That one is already in. So then I move down to my next one. And so for my next one, I'm gonna go white and white. It goes into the R. So I'm gonna go up over my lighting, kind of bring it down the other side a little bit. Once I get them all over there, then I can kind of bind them up and put them where I want. So I find where R is. Little flat screwdriver. Push it in there. Give it a little tug. That one's hooked up. Right from there. Then I move to an orange. So repeat the process again. Kind of going up over my bus line and my lighting I have. Make sure the end of the orange is ready to go. And orange is going to go in the one that is WK. So WK is right here. Plug it in. Give that just a little tug to make sure it's secure, which it is. And so that only leaves me one left, and that's my green. And my green goes into the west, or excuse me, WF. So up over my bus line. And make sure the end of that green wire is nice and flat and straight. Screwdriver in the little slot and give it a little tug. And so those four wires that just run that sensor are done. So I will put a little tape around them and kind of keep them together because I will need to repeat the same thing up above for my eastbound sensor. Uh, one other thing I like to do, and I don't know if it'll be able to be seen with the light that I have shining here, but when I run my hand over the top of the rails, I like to make sure that my west indicator is lit. So that little yellow LED lights up, shuts off. So obviously it's detecting my hand. It certainly should be detecting when a train goes over it. So I'll get those wires bound up and then uh, we'll move to the other end and connect that infrared sensor.
So this set of infrared sender and receiver are in and their wire leads are right here. So same thing, I will run them across and connect those to the TS2 up there, just as I did the other set. So I'm ready to run these wires through. There's the orange and the white. And there's the green and the yellow. And they're already on the correct side of my bus line. And so just as I did here for the westbound, I'm gonna do the same process, but it's gonna be on the upper part up here with eastbound. Now I know it's a little bit harder with my cat wire coming in already that has my power to it and the one that is already bringing the signal from my last signal that's on the lower deck in the way, but they'll feed in right up along the same line. So I'll just kind of walk you through the process. So starting with the orange wire, it goes to EK. And same thing, giving it just a little slight tug just to make sure it's in the port correctly. The white falls right in line with the other white. They share the same port because they kind of work together. So I want to make sure this one gets fed in there and then get both white wires a tug to make sure that the one I just put in and the previous one are still connected. Then I'm going to move to my green. My green goes in the EF right below. And so it's a little bit of trickiness to get to. There we go, it's in. And then the only one I have left is my yellow. And the yellow also shares with the other yellow. So it goes into the same port. So push down on that, feed it in there, and then get both little yellow ones a tug to make sure they're in. All right, and just like I did on the last one, I kind of want to make sure that they're working. And so I'll run my hand across, kind of make sure the sensors are going. All right. And so it's a little hard to see there with the light. I went ahead real quick and switched these around. I moved the, the blue wire up there so I had kind of a cleaner of my eastbound wires with that blue wire up there because essentially all it's doing is bringing in my power here for the brown and white and carrying my last signal okay so this side of the board is essentially all hooked up to the infrared so if i run my fingers across i got the yellow for the westbound sensor if i keep moving down the line there we go it's red i know it's hard to see the last time on the camera didn't even show up because the light was so bright but there's the red one showing that the eastbound sensor is working too. And so obviously when you have a train that's long enough, you're going to see both of those sensors lit up. So now the same thing again, I'm going to kind of bundle up my wires and tuck them up out of the way so I can move to this side of the board. And obviously that side of the board, that is for the eastbound and westbound signals. So these boards are beautifully designed that this side is all your infrared hardware that you basically need and this side is essentially your signals.
So at this step, I'm ready to drill the holes for the signals. So the nice thing that I always like to do is I'll take uh, like a 50 foot box car and I'll run it across. Obviously the sensors underneath are either going yellow since it's on the westbound or if it goes over here to the eastbound, it'll go red. But what I try to do is having these push pins here, those are kind of my signal location. And so I always look at it and say, okay, between the two infrared sensors are my signals pretty well centered. That's where I want to be. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. And so I will bring this right to like the edge of the infrared and go, oh, you know, the 50 foot car ends right about here. I'll roll it back the other way. Oh, you know, the end of the car rolls about there. So I'm about, I'm about an inch. And believe it or not, right between my fingers, that's where my push pins are. So I did a pretty good job measuring where I wanted them to be and kind of stayed within that same um, set standard that I was looking for. And so in a case like this, I'll use my tin plate, kind of put right there, I'll pull those push pins out. And I already have kind of the holes that'll be a pilot hole for what will go down into the uh, sub road bed and that for my signals. So I'll remove the box car and start getting ready to drill the holes. A trick that I learned when I worked at a hobby shop many years ago, and I've seen it also in articles and on other railroads, is we know the magnetic wire on signals is very fine, it's very small, and if there's a will or a way that it's gonna get hung up on anything, it's gonna be as you try to feed it down. And I'm always so concerned that I'm gonna end up breaking one of those magnetic wires off, and since they're near impossible to you know, kind of work with, I really don't wanna take the risk. Heck, even just filling in the uh, holes with the uh, infrared wiring, that was a struggle in some cases. So what I've done is I'll always take like a straw and with a straw, I'll just kind of feed it down in those holes that I have formed with the drill. And then as As I feed it down, my signals can be mounted right on top of that straw, but I also can raise or lower it from the bottom of the layout so I can make sure my signal base in that is right where I want it to be. So I can run the wires through the straw, snip off any of the excess underneath, but also be able to adjust the height. So I do that on both sides of the track of just putting the wire in and then they're ready to go. So there they are for my signals. So now I need to go over to the workbench and talk a little more about signals. All right, the signals I get are from Custom Signal Systems and they come very nicely packaged and have the wires all basically indicated with like a little plastic piece, whether it's a red, a yellow or green aspect. And it already has the magnet wire ends ready to solder on for some extra leads. I've gotten some that already have the leads to them. Others, I basically get out my, my clamp, my soldering iron, and I wire them on myself, which is fine also. So either way works works fine for me. So probably the 
most delicate thing is getting them out of the package without you know breaking the uh, maintenance platform or the ladder and that you just want to be real careful getting them out of the package because they are packaged nicely but you also want to get them out of the package in one piece as well so little bags I always save because those are great for other parts I always try to grab a hold of the base and then just like I did with the infrared wires try to get them so they'll lay a little flatter than that okay and so it already has a resistor on it and so I'll just clip it to the clamp kind of my other set of hands there so there's the signal and one thing I like to do is a few months ago I picked up one of these logic rail um, signal testers it just takes a 9 volt battery you just put the red the yellow um, your common um, on there and essentially you can then kind of use the slider switch to make sure that the signal is all good so far I have not had a signal that's been bad yet but it's always good to kind of check it out before I put it on the layout So I'll get these leads wired up and then we'll just kind of see how the signal works before we wire on the additional leads. All right, so I have the signal hooked up and so let me shut this other light off. So there's the green aspect, amber or yellow, and then red. So just a real quick way to check them out before they go on the layout and before I uh, solder on the, the leads to go through the layout and, and to the TS2 board. All right, so that one checks out, so I'll, I'll repeat the same process with the other signal. All right, when it comes to wiring these, um, a lot of times you can get a small enough wire stripper Unfortunately, my small wire stripper I've loaned out and haven't gotten back. So I find sometimes what's really handy is just use a little bit of fire from lighter, getting it lit, kind of melting off that conduit, and then just cleaning it up. If there's too much wire, obviously I can trim that off. But once it cools down, usually I just clean the end of it. Make sure there's no waxiness to it or that and uh, then I know some people have a preference whether they like to tin their wires or not I always like to tin my wires so I'll just take the soldering iron a little solder and just tin that up and then wrap it on um, the common and then I'll do the same for the other wires of the red the yellow and the green with the magnetic wire Tinning my wire a little bit. Wrap it on there. All 
All right, and so that's soldered. Then obviously I want to protect that joint. So I will feed a little heat shrink tubing right up there. Oops, looks like I've got kind of damaged in on this one. Let's see if it'll feed the other way a little better. Feed that on there so I've got my heat shrink tubing on there right there. And then just come back with a little heat and cinch that thing right down. Make it secure so it doesn't go anywhere. So there's the common, so I need to do the same now with the magnetic wire of the red, yellow, and green. Got my signal, the uh, magnetic wire, and then obviously my leads. So I'll run them down my straw, and then as soon as they're underneath, I'll kind of tuck them over my bus line and then take them right to my TS2, okay? And obviously the straw helps feed the wires down a little faster. It's still a, it's kind of a tedious process, so I, I won't say fast, but it does go faster um, with the straw because then it doesn't get hung up on any of the scenery, plaster cloth, styrofoam, anything that's in that sub road bed and that. So let's see how it goes. We're gonna start with the eastbound signal first. connect the eastbound signal so on this side of the circuit board basically runs the signals so the top one part is for the eastbound the bottom part is for the westbound so I'm going to work from the top down so I'm going to hook up the eastbound signal and then I'll repeat the same process when it comes to the westbound uh, it's pretty straightforward G is for your green uh, Y is for your yellow R is for your uh, yellow or excuse me R is for your red. Um, there's also an advanced approach, but since I modeled the 1950s and that was not a thing, I won't have an advanced approach. And so then the black just kind of goes to the common. So I know this is gonna be a little shadowed because I'm right-handed and I know I can't do some of this left-handed. So uh, uh, some of this might be blocked a little bit. So I apologize for that in advance.
All right, so now let's go above and see if the signal's working. So in this case, our signal is on green and obviously it's just freestanding right now, um, not mounted. But if I roll a car across it, sensors, there we go to red. And of course it'll stay red until it gets to that next lower signal that'll clear it up. If it goes back the other way, we get our clean, clear signal. All right, so that's great. Now let's get ready to install the westbound signal and then we'll mount them so they're facing the track. Now it's time to install the next signal. So just like I did the eastbound one, I have the wire leads on the westbound signal. I'll carefully feed them through the straw and then connect it to the TS2. And so just like I did the eastbound signal, the westbound signal is the bottom half with the TS2, and it just goes the opposite way, starting with green at the bottom, then yellow, then red, then for your advanced approach, which I don't have, and then just for your regular black common or your ground, okay? So I'll get those wired up here real quick as well. The wires are now hooked up. However, once I ran a train past, I ran into an issue. However, it was an easy fix. When I first started at the beginning of the video, I had both a white and blue wire down here on the bottom of the TS2 board. And that was carrying the signal from the lower deck to the upper deck. Well, it's real easy to get twisted around and sure enough, instead of being on the bottom, they need to be moved up here at the top and then these bottom ones will carry on the signal to the next TS2 board that I will put in. So that was a real easy fix just to switch those two around. So just some last minute things that I will do to take care of is a lot of my wires that are loose, I use these little connectors here that are just kind of like self-tapping with a cordless drill. Just kind of bring the wires into them, put them in the little loop, and then just zip them up there just to keep them handy. Nice thing is, all I have to do is back that screw out if I ever need to pull those wires out. These, I was able to get like a hundred of them for like 10 bucks off Amazon. So they come in real handy and it's just a quarter inch socket on my drill to put them up there. So that's pretty handy to use. And so the signals themselves, obviously I've got one in the green aspect. As soon as a car goes by, it goes to the red. So. I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to continuing with my series of signaling as I move to the upper deck. So I guess I can take my October one down and obviously I'll have a November one coming up real soon. So take care for now, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk with you real soon.